end of the First World War left Germany burdened with a broken people. Devastation and demoralization plagued the population. However, as is often the case, true genius and art resulted and German Expressionism was born. These talented filmmakers tapped into the time zeitgeist to create powerful works of art that have still lasted to this day to the test of time. German Expressionism in film was based on the premise that film becomes art only to the extent that the film image differs from reality, placing the primary importance of the film on conveying the inner emotions of the artist rather than external realism. To this end, the German Expressionists became masters of missing scene, or the way a scene has been designed and staged for the camera. As we shall see, this particular interpretation of cinema would go on to influence a multitude of famous filmmakers, even to this day. Two years after the war came one of the most influential films of German Expressionism, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, directed by Robert Wien. It was one of the first films to use a framed story where the main narrative sets up for the twist ending of the film. This technique was used in a similar way by Robert Zemeckis in the film Forrest Gump. The majority of the film is told in the form of a flashback and a conversation. Both end with the final act set in the present and concludes with a final twist in the plot that ends the narrative. In Fritz Lang's Metropolis, we see a futuristic dystopia inspired by early 1920s New York City. Many science fiction films have borrowed from and been influenced by the elements in Lang's society. A great example can be seen in The Matrix Revolutions by the Wachowskis. Here, as in Metropolis, we see a dehumanized future. Your machines have become so advanced they've taken over, placing humans as their slaves in virtual prisons. In both Ridley Scott's Blade Runner from 1982 and Len Wiseman's 2012 remake of Total Recall, we are presented with a very similar dystopian society originating from Lang's vision. Here, even the missing scene is similar to Metropolis's city setting, including the use of flying vehicles and elevated multi-level roadways. We also see a parallel between Metropolis and a modern day film with Lang's approach to man's desire to be creator and in Tim Burton's 1990 classic, Edward Scissorhands. Notice again the similarities in the missing scene of both settings. Both laboratories are created with very distinct and stylized sets, staged to evoke emotion from the viewer. Borrowing and enhancing upon the techniques found in Scandinavian film of the time, Nunaus Nosferatu in 1922 utilized long silhouettes and shadows to dramatize the villain's entrance. In both Tim Burton's films, Batman Returns and Dark Shadows, we see a very similar technique, even paying homage to the original in the film Dark Shadows in this scene at the vampire's entrance. Although this golden age in German film ended in 1933, with Hitler's rise to power and the end of the film entertainment industry in favor of propagandist film, Expressionism lives on 